Hey, I'm Nate Kenny with Trango Climbing, and today I'm going to talk about how to sharpen ice tools. We're going to talk about how to do a basic sharpening and how to save a pick that's fairly trashed. So today I'm going to talk about sharpening ice tools. Uh, we'll start with why you might want to sharpen ice tools. They'll get dull throughout the course of use, and sometimes you will rock your tools, um, meaning hit rock when you're trying to hit ice. And when that happens, if it's just a little bit of damage to the tip of the tool, and you still have your beak intact, then you can just hit it with a regular file and it's pretty easy. Um, the type of file that I like to use is an 8 inch bastard file. Bastard is the actual type of grain on the file. And the way I like to sharpen my ice tool is if you look at the front of the tool, there's a natural bevel to it, a natural angle that the tool is meant to follow, kind of like that. A lot of people sharpen their tools really, really steep like that and that'll just cause you to have to sharpen it more often. You don't need that sharp of a tool, that angle is fine, so I like to go about 45 degree angle, like that. When I sharpen my tools, I like to hold it like this. I'll put the tip of my tool between my knees, and then I'll brace the pommel of the tool into my armpit, kind of like this. With my knees pinched harder on the tool, I'll do one side, maintaining that 45 degree angle. Notice I'm only going in one direction with the file, I'm not going back and forth like that. That's not really that bad for your tool, it can heat up the metal too much, but it's really bad for your file. You're going to wear out your file if you're going back and forth like that. So I prefer to go in one direction on the tool, just like that. I'm ready to switch, I flip the tool over, I pinch the uh, handle of the tool in between my knees, and then I hit the pick like this, same way on the other side. And there we go, our tool's nice and sharp again. We're ready to swing it into ice. And that's how you do a basic tool sharpening. All right, so we have another tool here, and this one has seen quite a bit of use. You can see that the pick doesn't quite have that spike on the end of it anymore, and that's really important. That's something that we want to reestablish on this tool. If you're doing any mixed climbing and your tool has a very rounded front like that with a long second tooth, then every time you get on a hold, you pull down on it, you're actually pretty likely to lever yourself off that hold skate because of the middle tooth. And also this doesn't have much grip when you're going into ice and you have a rounded front. So we want this to be nice and spiky and sharp, pointing down at the end of the tool. So the way we're gonna deal with that, we're actually going to take off a bit of this down here, down to the longest part of this. We're gonna remove one tooth off of the tool, give it that natural curve back. Just like before, we're gonna hold it like this, and we're gonna figure out how much of this we're going to need to take down, because if we just go ahead and sharpen it without taking any off the front, what we're gonna end up with is just a sharp, rounded shape that's not really gonna sit right, and it's not really gonna dig into the ice very well. Going directly along the front of it, like this, okay, straight on the front, making it more dull and more flat, is how we're gonna reestablish that fine point at the tip. All right, now if you take a look at what I've just done, it looks a bit like I've ruined the tool, or ruined the pick. Um, what you can see here is that I've created a completely flat surface along the tip of the pick, right? But now it doesn't end in a rounded feature, it ends in a solid point again. So now that we have a totally rounded feature right here, or a totally flat feature at the tip, and we have our point back, we can sharpen this up again. Now, if you want to use this on ice, it's not super important to remove the first tooth right here, but if you're going to climb any mixed with it, that first little tooth right there can cause you to lever off of holds and skate your pick sometimes. So it is a good idea to remove this tooth if you're gonna be on mix. Let's go ahead and remove that tooth now. What I'm gonna do is just shave the top of that tooth down until it doesn't exist. So 
So now we've eliminated that tooth, we want to restore some of the curvature underneath this so we get a nice beak going to it again. I like to just take a round file and just hit a couple of times right here, kind of between the very tip and what is now the first tooth. Sweet. So now we've kind of restored the original profile in the front and we've taken off a tooth so we don't lever ourselves off of holds on mixed terrain. And now we see the front is still totally flat like that. We're just going to sharpen that back into a normal shape and then our tool will be good to go. Alright, now we have a nice sharp pick, went from being totally beat up, and now we've restored this nice sharp point right at the front of it. And that's what I always try to achieve when I sharpen my tools. All picks have a taper, they're thinnest at the front and thickest towards the back. If you start sharpening your pick too far down, you'll get into the thicker metal and that'll shatter out more ice as you swing and make your swing a little bit more difficult. And I never take off more than one tooth on my picks. Otherwise, they won't climb very well. So, one thing you can do is just take a look at how the original geometry was versus how they are now. We've restored that point, but there's still a lot of metal that we don't have anymore. Still have a nice sharp point right at the front. It's gonna dig into the ice and keep you from slipping off of small holds on mixed terrain. And that's how to do a basic sharpening and how to save a thrashed pick. All right, thanks for watching.